Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Jim, who is uh, taking extended trips in his Toyota Tacoma. And I think we'll get some really good ideas for you, whether you want to live in it full time or just take trips. So, Jim, are you uh, retired? I am retired. I taught school for 35 years, and so I have a retirement. And, and I also did construction, and I retired from that about a year and a half ago. So. Very good. Yeah. And uh, so you're just uh, like out traveling? I am. I just wanted to get away from the winter um, this year. I live in Wisconsin. Whoa. And right now they're having very cold weather there, although it's starting to warm up. But in the last few days, they had um, 50 below zero with the wind chill. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so I'm really glad I'm on, on the road. And so uh, do you have a hobby that you do out on the road? I do paragliding. So explain to us exactly what paragliding is. Uh, paragliding is where you have a, we call it a wing. It's like a parachute. And um, power paragliding is with the motor on your back. And I have one of those back home, but I haven't been doing that. Um, but free paragliding is where you go off a mountain or a cliff, and then you can, you know, fly dependent upon the winds or thermals, you can stay up for, you know, a very short time or long periods of time. So, and I, I would guess you probably do a lot of that on the coast, yeah. in the Pacific Coast. On the coast, and I've flown every western state. Uh -huh. um, as long as you have mountains and you've got good thermal conditions or wind conditions coming into the mountain, and you can ridge soar or you can thermal, and it's um, it's a pretty exciting sport. And uh, Wisconsin's a great place, but uh, no great big mountains in Wisconsin. No big mountains in Wisconsin, no. no. <laughs> There's very so, little paragliding there, but we, we can practice and handle the wing and you know learn how to do the basics there. With a uh, paragliding, you jump off the mountain uh, and you land at the bottom, I think. Yes, yes. And how do you get back up to your rig? We, well, we usually, we fly with more than one person generally. Right. So, I mean, I have done hiking or I've hiked up. And I also, a couple of years ago, I made a rack that goes on the back of my truck and I bought a little Honda um, trail bike, a little Honda oh. 90 trail bike. Great rigs. Yeah, and it can go on the back of my, my rig here and then I can slide it back when I need to get in and out of my truck. And so I've used that and it, it, was, it works pretty good, but I didn't want to bring it on this trip. And so I made a rack for the front of my truck, and I um, carry my little bike. On Just there. a bike. So, yeah. Sure, that'll work. Yeah, and I get exercise that way. Right. <laughs> I found that if the, if the bike is easy to access, and you can get it on and off fast, you'll ride more. And so I like it because it's so easy to get on and off. And, um, and I can see it. Because right. I, I lost a bike in the back on a commercial rack. I lost it in, in Iowa. And so then I picked this bike up. I says, I got to come up with something else. So I, I mounted the front bumper hitch on here, and then I came up with the rack um, design, and it's, it's worked really well. The, the channel for the tires, and it just sets in there. And then I, I welded this piece on, and I just strap the pedal on here like this, and and I'm ready to go. You really are, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I thought about an electric bike and I've done research on it and going up some of the mountains that we go up, it's uh, even in a truck, it's an hour drive up. Oh wow. And so an electric bike would never make it. Right. Um, the battery would just be, it would be dead before you get up there. Oh, so, so just your legs will be dead when you get up there. <laughs> yes, well normally we fly with someone else and we just pay yes. them to drive yeah. us up and then we can fly down and so our foot, my brother also paraglides, so he and I have done some trips where, you know, we could park one car down below, take the other vehicle up, and then fly down, take the other car, and retrieve the first vehicle. Makes perfect sense, yeah. yeah. How's it working out staying in the Toyota? Well, I've taken it the truck on maybe four trips so far. Every time, and even with the minivan, every time I go on a trip, I tweak it. And I really think I've got it almost perfected now. Um, it's really worked well, and I've, I've learned a lot of tricks. So, And how many months out of the year would you say you spend in the Toyota? This year I'll be at least three months, maybe four months this year. Mm -hmm. This is the longest trip I've had in the Tacoma, because I used to travel in a minivan. 
And so I've um, changed from minivan to the, to the um, pickup because I wanted more clearance and I wanted four wheel drive. I did a lot of research and it had the highest ground clearance for the mid-sized truck. And so um, that's why I picked it. I'm real happy with it. Yeah, if you're going to climb up on the top of a mountain, yes. you want to be, have a rig capable of that. You have to have the rig. I've, I've scraped my oil pan more than once. Lucky I didn't tear it out, but I know people that have. What year is it? This is a 2017. I bought it, um, I actually ordered it um, two years ago in February. I picked it up in May and I've got a little over about 31,000 on it now. And so do you get pretty good gas mileage out of the well, that's, that's, and I'm a very conservative driver. I'm averaging about 25 miles to the gallon. That is amazing. Yes, with the shell and you know, all the stuff I carry, I think that's pretty good because I do too. It's, only, it's rated at 18, um, 23 and I'm averaging 25. And the most I've gotten on a tank, I record it, and I've got a book and I record it all. The most I've gotten, this is through the mountains, 29.6 miles per gallon. That's amazing. On, on one tank, and so, but averaging about 25. There's nothing better than a Toyota Tacoma. Well, thank you, I, I have yeah. to agree. I mean, I did the research, and right. a lot of people said, get the Tacoma, get, you know, instead of the, the, the Chevy Colorado or the Nissan, and so I, I, I did, it was a little more, more expensive, but I heard they're really reliable. You know, it pays off in the long run. You'll be surprised what I've done with it. Yeah. So, and how I've made it work. Right. I can almost stand up because I'm so small, but I can't stand up in there. And right. that is a disadvantage, but it works. You know, most of the time I'm out of the vehicle except for right. you're sleeping. So. You, you, you live out of it, you don't yes. live in it. Yes. Although I've been spending 12, 13 hours in there, when it gets dark, I'm in there. Right. But I can show you how that works for me. What I like to say is our, our house is tiny, but our backyard is enormous, <laughs> just enormous. Yeah, yeah. It, it sure is. And the nice thing is the backyard yard changes almost every day. Yeah, as often as you want. <laughs> yes, and I do move a lot. Well, do you mind if we take a look oh, inside? Absolutely. Let's do that. So it looks like a really nice setup in here. Tell us all about it. Okay, um, I originally had the bed on this side. And um, after my first trip, I realized, that, and I didn't have any really cabinets, and I had a lot of bins. And when I'd stack stuff up though, um, with the bed over here, so all my storage was on this side. And so it blocked my view here. So I redid it and moved the bed on this side because when I'm driving, I want to be able to see out here if there's a car coming up. Right. And that's something that someone should consider if they're yes. going to do a build. Um, because, I, like I said, I had the bed over there because that's where it was in my minivan. And so I, um, I did, I think that's a really good idea is to keep it on this side, keep this open. So when you're driving, you have um, complete visibility. Mm -hmm. Great it's, a idea. Safe, it's a safety thing. Yes. And, and um, then I built uh, some cabinets in here. And um, I used to do a lot of construction. I, I still do some, but I've learned to use small bins um, because I can keep stuff very organized. And so I got different size bins with different things in it. Right. And I think one of the tricks to traveling in a very small space is you have to be extremely organized. Yes. And as you can see, mine is not real cluttered um, in here. At least I don't think it is. No. And I got a full size mattress and well, a full thickness mattress. I cut it down because I only needed, uh, you know, it's like 29 inches. And so I, I, um, I did, I took my bandsaw and I cut the mattress. It was uh, one of those, um, thermal foam mattresses from mm -hmm. Walmart or um, memory foam. Mm -hmm. And so it's very comfortable. I sleep as good in here as I do have my memory foam mattress at home. So, and then I've got a, my sleeping bag. This is a thin sleeping bag. I got a quilted blanket I put over it and I've been down 18 degrees and I'm plenty warm. And I actually have another sleeping bag um, in there if I need it, it's in the front of the truck that I can put on here if I right. needed it. So, 
So probably while it's warm, this is just extra padding below you? Yes. And then I, a blanket, what a blanket I, on top. What I do, this quilt actually goes underneath the mattress, and so it doesn't slip out. So if I'm, if I'm really warm at night, I just push this over. I just sleep in the, in the sleeping bag. Right. And, but if it gets cold, then I flip the, the blanket over the top of me. Right. And so, but, you know, I, I can sit in here and, you know, I, I read. I, I love the tablet. I purchased right. this uh, just last year, and I read a lot of books. And this week, I went to the library, and I downloaded uh, a couple games. I play chess. Uh -huh. And so I can actually play chess against the tablet then. Yeah. And um, that's one of my hobbies is playing chess. And so, But I love the tablet because I need no light to read. And I've probably read 10 books on this trip already. Right. So I, I, I love that. And I... I do have a little electrical in here. Mm -hmm. I got a, this is a marine um, switch control thing. I've got a little, um, it's got the voltage on here so I can just tell what my voltage is. I put an isolator switch in with a um, AGM. AGM battery. Mm -hmm. It's not very big, but I've got the isolator switch so after three, four days, I just turn it on and I can charge it when I'm driving. And otherwise, it lasts a long time because the only thing I'm using electrical is the light, which I don't even use that often, and charging my tablet and my phone. Mm -hmm. I used to have a 12-volt refrigerator plugged into the cigarette lighter, and I, I used that. I used to take a cooler. I've learned to go completely dry. I learned to live with a very little electrical needs. And you so, have your you have your kitchen, your little kitchen. <laughs> yep. So do you mostly cook on the road or eat out? No, I mostly cook. I very seldom eat out. It's easy, you know. Cooking is not difficult, and even on the road, it's not difficult because you got canned goods. Right. You know, you can get canned meat, canned fish. You know, I make oatmeal every morning, and I have fresh fruit, and so and I make my coffee in here every morning, and that works very well. Well, I've got a very simple system for making coffee. I've tried all different types of coffee systems. This works very well for me. So so I really like the uh, hood you have over mm -hmm. your, your stove. How does that work? I'll show you how that works. And it, actually, the inspiration came from you when you used your tin foil over your, you went to a one burner stove. Right. I also have a one burner stove, just like the one you had. I used that. But I found that this one works very well for me because um, I can pull it forward and cook on here and have it open. And so I was fooling around with the, the tin foil like you had. Well, I had a piece of six inch um, heat duct pipe. And so I just cut that, um, just scrap I had at home. I just cut it, flattened it out. And I, I put that on, I said, oh, that'll work. And so I made a stand that went from here up to here. It was this. Well, after I was in here a couple weeks ago, I thought, you know, I could do that different. So I just got my pliers, I bent it, and I hang it from the hook here, and I... It's great. It, it works good, and then I store it right underneath the stove when I'm traveling. If I'm off-road, off I have had it actually jump off of the shelf, even I though I have it. a little lip. So what I do is this. I have a little um, handle in there. All this stuff is all scrap stuff I had at home. I None of this cost me anything. All the wood, nothing. It's all scrap from, from when I from my building so um, so I actually there you go it does not take me long to break down and be on the road right and so I mean I you know when I'm traveling I I make coffee every morning in here because it's cool in the morning as mm -hmm. you know yeah and and I I, um, I just heat up my water in here with my coffee and so a lot of my food is right in here and I have some extra stuff in the in the front of the truck right but um, if I don't need it, I don't, I don't have it in here. So, but then, you know, I make my, my oatmeal and, and I got a washing system that I, I use that works uh, quite well. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. It's a simple setup, but the whole key to living in here is to be organized. So many people have said, you usually have more than you need. Yeah. And I've learned to cull down. And, um, and make it a little simplar. Right. Drapes that go all around 
full around. I got a screen that goes in the complete door. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and I can have it full or I can raise up the tailgate and have a partial screen. Well, you've mm -hmm. got it set up really, really nice. Yeah. <laughs> if I need to, like this morning I shaved and so I, I got my mirror, it fits in what there. What a clever <laughs> idea that is. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's simple, you know, and like I say, everything that I have, all my bathroom, supplies are right in here uh -huh. my first aid stuff everything i need to clean up brush my teeth um, all in there i keep all my my underwear and socks in this bin and the other thing i've learned is i wash quite regularly and you just and, use uh, one of your tubs to wash in yeah if you want to see it's sure a, this is a very very simple system this is my my main this is my my bucket for going to the bathroom and I put my plastic bag in there but I and I wash my clothes in here as well right and so then I rinse them in here mm -hmm. and so it works very well and, you know, and I, I got to show you where I wash dishes too so you can have very few clothes if you just wash them every couple three days it, it, absolutely and I think that that is the whoop that is the trick here's some of my food but I'll show you what else I do here I've got this this bucket here let me see. Oh, look at that. This goes in here, and then I can wash my dishes here. Oh, my. And so I got, you know, I got running water if I want, you know. So, you know, it works really well. And then this, it's... A couple of sponges. It, yeah, and, you know, I don't have a lot of dishes. Right. And But I wash them as soon as I'm done using them. It takes right. me a few minutes to wash them. And right. I feel that you have to just do the stuff right away. <laughs> yes, especially dishes. Yes. No way. Otherwise, it, it dries on there, and it takes you so much more water and so much more time. Yes. So. And, and your clothes also. If you had yep. 30 days worth, you'd oh. have a big pile. Oh, it'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. And I've never gone to a laundromat. Wow. I got something else that I should share with you too. Okay. Um, that, you know, the baby wipes that people use. Sure. And I use them, I wash up with them. I don't know if people realize how strong those things are. And this, I'm, I'm a very conservative person, but I have learned that you can wash them. I wash mine out and then I put them back in here and I can use them. I, I usually do them. And I put a little antibacteria soap in here, you know, and dampen them. So they're just like a regular baby. Maybe you could put alcohol or whatever, but I can reuse them. And so I don't have to keep buying packs of those. Well, there's another thing I did too. Um, and I kind of changed this. If I want, I got this board that can slip in here. I can make a full bed all the way across here. And um, so, I mean, it's, it works. This is my cutting board, actually. I put that in, well, actually, I put that too far. But the cutting board goes in here. And that's the other end. And that I usually just leave the cutting board in there because I, I use it to put my food on and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But, um, but I can make a full bed in here. Now I've got four foot bed. Yeah, nice. Then I also designed it. So this, when I'm reading at night, I can take this and it goes in here. And now I can sit and I got a table I can work yeah, on. A table. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so I can sit right on, you know, right in the bed and I got a little table. So you designed so, this to be the same height as the uh, shell. Yes, yes. So that yep. goes across perfectly yep. level. Yep. And actually, I it was level, but I mean, I it's a little bit on a slant, not much. But I put this on because I, I put the lip on after my last trip or maybe two trips ago because it, it held stuff. I thought I need something to keep stuff from sliding. So and the other thing is with my bed, I've, I've seen a lot of builds where people use two by four frames and two by six and it's so overbuilt. Mine is just a piece of half inch maple plywood. Mm -hmm. My supports, oh my. They're not even, I used to have this hinged in here. I decided I don't need it hinged and I've got two of those, one in the middle. I can take them out if I need to, I can move them. And it's, it's tongue and grooved into the little pockets on the side, but I can take this out in probably Three minutes, I can take this whole thing out of here. So you're, this is your daily driver at home? Yes, it's the only vehicle I have. 
Well, that gives you the whole tr truck bed it, it gives, other than this. Other than that, but I can take that out in about five minutes as well. That's amazing. That's yeah. a really, really good idea. Yeah. And then the other trick is I've got a full set of winter clothes in here. And I put them in duffel bags mm -hmm. and stuff them and right. set up in bins because you can stuff them tight and you can get a lot more stuff in. Yes. A lot of times I'll just sit in here and I can read here mm -hmm. just as well. It's, it's very comfortable. So I can sit in here and, you know, lean, lean against the back here. Mm -hmm. And um, so. You probably using the uh, back, the super cab as storage? Yeah, it's extended cab. I use it. I got my flying gear in there. Oh, that's my right. wing is in there and my harness. And I've got other stuff in there, you know, food. And just just storage. miscellaneous yeah. stuff. Well, Jim, thank you so much for sharing your little home with us. There's just yep. so many great ideas in here. Well, thank you. Just uh, really, really good ideas. Yeah, it's, the key is to be simple. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> and organized. Yeah. So, folks, there you go. We Great idea for if you're living in a pickup and shell. You know, pickups are a lot easier to find than vans and the shells, and they get four-wheel drive if you want it. Uh, there's a lot of really good things about the pickup. So if you do like the idea, they got some great ideas here, Jim. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Enjoyed right. it. Really, so. really good. So if you got anything out of this, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.